Hello Internet and welcome to part 12 of my Android development tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use code to create open issue queries and a whole bunch of other things with SQLite databases inside of Android. And I structured this so much like a cheat sheet that it would be a good idea to get the code that is in the description underneath of the video and take notes on it. And if you missed part 10 or 11 of this tutorial series, whenever I first started off creating this SQLite database app, I provide links to those videos in the upper right hand corner. So I have a ton to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here I am inside of what I am referring to as Contacts App. And I restructured this whole thing to make it very, very understandable. And the exact file I'm going to be used is going to be called DB Tools for database tools. And I set up this class so that it will be able to be used over and over pretty easily inside of just about anything else. And I have this inside of the package, which is going to be new think tank contacts app. And this guy right here, of course, new think tank can be your name if you do not own a website address. That's just what I use. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a new class called DB Tools, of course. And it's going to extend SQL Lite open helper and it basically does exactly what the name says it's going to in reference to sqlite open helper going to either open or create a new database for you to use and this guy is going to require me to go and get myself some libraries so got that and then db tools is going to say that we need to add a constructor which i'm just going to do that by hand so let's just come in here and go public db tools and it is going to receive a context now a context is going to provide you access to different application specific resources and classes and this is going to be needed by the SQLite open helper super method whenever we call it so that it will be able to create our database for us so context and then this is going to be called application context and of course I'm gonna have to come inside of here and import context and then I'm going to make a reference to the SQLite open helper constructor file and pass it application context and of course you can come in here and change this to uppercase C if we want to do that. And there we are. And then we are also going to pass to it the name that we want for our database. And I'm going to call this contactbook.db. And then you can just type in null and one. This is something you don't need to worry about. One is in reference to a version and so forth and so on. So don't worry about that. All right, so now that we have that set up, let's go up to DB Tools and it's going to want us to add on implemented methods. So just click on that and allow it to add those in. And it's going to create an on create method and an on upgrade method. So first, let's go in here to the onCreate method. And what onCreate is going to do for us is whenever our database is created, it is going to be called. And inside of here, it would make a lot of sense to create your tables. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to issue a query, just like always. And I'm going to say create table, just like we've done before. And I'm going to call this contacts. And then I'm going to go contact ID and integer, just like always, same old stuff, primary key like that and then I'm gonna put in first name and it's going to be text put in another comma just creating a query just like any other time and then down here we're gonna continue making this query and so we're gonna have last name also going to be text phone number in this situation also going to be text of course email address text home address and let's get rid of this so we can fit a little bit more information text and then at the end of that, after we're done putting everything in, put in your final brace, but do not put a semicolon. That's a very common error. So that's the reason why I bring that up. And there we go. Now we have our query all set up for us. So now what we're going to do is execute our query. And to do that, I'm actually going to call this database. And to do that, I'm going to have to come up here and go database inside of there. Makes a little bit more sense to me. And then I'm going to call exec SQL. And what this is, is a method that executes the query provided as long as the query isn't a select query or the query doesn't return any data. Well, this creates a table, so it doesn't return anything. So that's perfectly fine. And then we're going to throw our query inside of there. So whenever on create is called, which is going to be called whenever this object is first created it's going to come in here and create our table now of course if you have more than one table it would be wise to create more than one table inside of here and then we get into on upgrade and on upgrade is going to be used to do things like drop tables add tables or do pretty much anything that relates in any way to an upgrade of this database 
And what we're going to specifically do in our on upgrade is we're going to drop the table to delete the data that is inside of it. And then we're going to call on create again to create a brand new empty table. So it's pretty much like deleting what the data that's inside of there and replacing it with new data. And we're going to drop our table just like we would with SQL if exists contacts. And there we are. That's going to be the query we're going to issue. And then we're going to go database again. So let's change this to database. And since we don't need to receive any information, exec SQL is going to work as well, just like before. And then remember, we want to go and recreate our database afterwards. So let's just go on create and pass it the database. So that's going to recreate an empty database for us. So what are some other things we're going to need to do? Well, we're going to need to insert people into our contact database. And to do that, we're going to go public void, insert contact. Sounds like a good name to me. And here we're going to use a hash map and we're going to have string for the key value pairs. And this guy is going to be called query values. So this key valued paired hash map is going to come in here and pass in all of the data that we want to put inside of a table in our database. Now to do this, we're going to first need to open our database for reading and writing. And to do that, we're going to go SQLite database like that. And let's just go database is equal to this. And then we're going to say get writable database. And the this is a reference to this guy right here. So that's where that's coming from. So now that we're going to be able to read and write data to the database, we're going to need to create a new class called content values. And the reason why we are going to use content values, well, first off, content values is going to store key value pairs being the column name and the data that's in that specific column. And the content values data type is needed because the database requires its data type be passed to it, which you're going to see here in a second. So I'm just going to call this values just to keep it simple is equal to new content values. Like I said, you can use this as a cheat sheet. You know, there's no reason to try and memorize all this stuff. And all I'm doing down here is coming in and importing all the libraries that I need. There you can see. Now what I need to do is add this information to it. So I'm going to use put and key. Well, first name is going to be the key. And then the value I'm going to get from query values, which was the hash map that was passed into this. And I'm going to say get and then inside of it first name because everything's going to be stored the same way in the hash map. Well, I'm going to need three of these guys or I'm going to need four more two, three, four. And of course, we're going to store last name. And I'm going to say last name like that. And then here, I'm going to go phone number and here phone number. I changed some things up here. I figured it would be easier since we're referring to the same type of data to keep the names the same. Just a judgment call on my part. And then finally, home address and home address. Okay, so we have all that set up. And then we can call our database and call insert on it. And this is going to handle everything for us. And we need to put our table name inside of here. And that's going to be contacts and then null column hack. Just leave this as null. Don't worry about that. And then values is going to be what we put in here, which is the content values. That's what it's expecting data type wise. So that's the reason why we're using content values. Then after we have that set up, we want to release the reference to the SQLite database object. And to do that, we're going to say close. And we are all done with that. So another thing we might need to do is to update a contact. So update contact sounds like a good name to me. And it's also going to receive a hash map. So there's no point in me going and recreating this. Let's just grab this guy, copy it, come down inside of here and paste it in there. And then inside of update contact, well, I need to open my database and I'm also going to need to do a whole bunch of the same sort of thing again. So what I'm going to do is just come up here and copy this. And I could have had it in a separate method, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. So we're going to create our new database and it's going to be read and writable content values saw before stores key value pairs here. We're going to put in those keys and values in exactly the same way. And then we are going to return database dot update and database update as you can see is going to have a table name that's this right here content values that guy right there is going to go there then we're going to have a where clause and then we're going to have where clause arguments inside of there 
So the table name is going to be contacts, just like before. Values is going to be the same, because there that is. That's what we need. And then inside of it, we're going to need a where clause. And I'm actually going to put this on the next line and draw that guy inside of there. And what we're going to do is we are going to update based off of the contact ID being equal to, and then question mark, and then inside of this guy, where arguments, we're just going to be passing in one ID inside of it. Here we're going to create it as a string array, but we don't really need that. And then we're going to say query values dot get, and then we're going to get whatever the value is for contact ID in this situation. Curly brackets, and then close that off. And there we go. Got that all updated, and that's how you update an SQLite database using Android tools. Something else we might need to do is to delete a contact. So we're going to do that. We're going to say delete contact. And again, we're going to get a string ID. The contact ID is how we're going to decide that we want to delete information. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to create the opportunity to read and write to our database. So copy that, paste that inside of there. Then we're going to create a query for deletion, delete query going to be equal to, and we're going to say delete from contacts, which is the name of our table, where contact ID is equal to, put a single quote and a double quote inside of there, and then I'm going to say ID plus double quote, put a single quote inside of there, and again, remember, don't put the semicolon right here after this single quote, put it at the end there. And what we need to do is execute this query. So database, exec, SQL, and remember we can use that in the situations in which we do not have anything being returned. And there you go, that is how to delete a contact. Another thing we might need to do inside of here is to get all our contacts returned to us. And they're gonna be returned to us in an array list. And guess what that array list is gonna have inside of it? A hash map, and it's gonna be strings for the key value pairs. And I'm gonna call this get all contacts like that and this wants the array list library of course so let's go get it for it and this array list of course well let's just come in here copy this one if type that out again that would be silly this array list is going to contain every row in the database and each rows key value paired stored inside of a hash map so I'm going to call this contact array list and this is going to equal to new and then I'm just going to copy this again and throw that in there okay so there's our array list with the hash maps then I'm going to create my select query this time is equal to and I'm just gonna say select well I want everything so select everything from contacts then I need to open my database for reading and writing so copy this guy come down here paste that in and then I'm gonna have to create what is called a cursor now a cursor is going to provide read and write access to the data that is going to be returned from this database query and I'm just gonna let it be named cursor just to be simple and then I'm going to issue a different type of query this is going to be a raw query and this is going to be used whenever you need to execute a query that's going to return a result as a cursor and just like before we're gonna put in our query inside of there and then selection args we don't need to do nothing for that and there we go we're fine and of course get the library for cursor and of course spell cursor right there we are now we got that working and now import the library well then what I need to do is cycle through the data that is returned and stored inside the cursor and to do that I go cursor dot move to first to move to the first row of data and we put it inside of an if clause so that we don't waste our time in the situation in which we don't have any data and then I'm to say do create a do while loop inside of here and this is going to be a hash map again a string string of course and I'm going to call this contact map equal to new hash map string string paste that in there paste that there da 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 alright got that then what I need to do is go contact map and put in the key valued pairs so the very first one is going to be contact ID and then the value to get it well it's going to be taken from the cursor which is right up here and to get information from the cursor it is going to be stored as index values and you're going to say get string and the index for this is going to be zero and you might ask yourself well how do i know it's zero well if we scroll way way up here you can see contact id is the very first part of the table 
first name is the second part, so this is going to be index 0, this is going to be index 1, and so forth and so on. Everything is in the order of how it was placed inside of the table. There we go, got all those set up. And then we just need to come in here, first name, and this is going to be 1, this is going to be last name, this is going to be equal to 2, this is going to be phone number, this is going to be 3, this is going to be email address, this is going to be 4, and of course there's one more, and this is going to be home address, and this is going to be 5. And then after we have all of that data taken out of that, we're going to add it to our contact array list, add, and this is going to be contact map, and that hash map is going to be stored inside of our array list. And then we have to put the condition down here in which we want to stop, and that condition is going to be whenever you call move to next with the cursor, it's going to come back with nothing and move to next, what it does is moves to the next row. So if it gets to the point where there is nothing more to pull out, of course it's going to come back as negative. And then remember, what we're doing up here is we're going to return an array list that is full with all those hash maps. So after this guy, we're going to say return contact array list. And there it is. So what's something else we might need? Well, we might not need all the information. We might just need one piece of information. And in that situation, we're going to be returning a hash map. And this guy is going to be called public. I'm going to go hash map string string. That's going to get just one piece of information. I'm going to call this get contact info. And you're going to pass in an ID. And it's going to return one hash map full of information. So I'm going to need a hash map. And I'm going to call this contact map as well. It is equal to new hash map, da 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 da, like that. Got that set up. So we need to open our database again. So I just come up here, grab this guy, copy, come down inside of here, paste it in. And in this situation, we don't need to write to it, so let's just change this to readable. And that's used when we don't need to write. And then we're going to create a select query equal to. And in this situation, we're going to say select everything from contacts where contact ID is equal to single quotes, da da da, put that down there, put in ID that's passed inside of there, like this, like that, single quote inside, and a semicolon. So that's going to be the query we're going to use. And then we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing again with the cursor. So I might as well just come up here and copy it, cursor, copy, and paste it in there and everything is going to be the same as we used last time. So cursor, of course, the raw query is going to execute the query and return the results and store them inside of the cursor just like that. Move the first, move the first row. We're going to continue getting this information, but in this situation I don't need this, so let's just get rid of that because I stored it outside. So there's that. Contact map, of course. Contact map is up here, so there that is. And we're just going to be storing contact, first name, last name, da 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 da. And in this situation, since I'm only going to get one map, I don't need to put that information in an array list. Cursor move to next, all that's fine. And then the final thing we're going to do is return a single map. Return paste. And there you go. That is how to do a whole ton of things with SQL Lite inside of Android. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to continue working on this app. I'm going to finish the whole entire address book Android app up. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.